Hello, my name is Ram and welcome to another video of Matuklasan. In my previous video, we talk about different concepts like propositions and truth values. And in this video, we will discover how to use logical operators to form compound propositions. The area of logic that deals with propositions is called the propositional calculus or propositional logic. We use letters to denote propositional variables like P, Q, R, S, and so on. But other books use capital letters to denote propositional variables. So I guess it depends upon what you are used to, right? But in our logic video series, I will often use small letters. For example, let P be the proposition Spider-Man is a Marvel Comics superhero. And Q, Stan Lee is the creator of the Spider-Man character. Compound propositions are formed from existing propositions using logical operators. So, logical operators are words or symbols that join two sentences to produce a new one. And here are the most commonly used logical connectives or operators. Negation, conjunction, disjunction, exclusive or, conditional, and biconditional. Negation in symbol is like this. So we read this as not P, it is not the case that P, it is false that P, or it is not true that P. And how do we use the translation? Well, it depends upon the English translation that you will do on a particular proposition. For example, let P be the proposition yellow is a color. So it is better to write not P in English as yellow is not a color. So dito, review tayo ng ating English, okay? And before I forget, some teachers and students prefer using this curvy line to represent a negation P. Conjunction is written in symbols like an arrowhead that points to the north. It can be read as P and Q, P more over Q, P although Q, P still Q, and so on. Let's have this example. Let P be the proposition Malaya is excellent, while Q is the proposition Malaya is virtuous. Now, how do we write these symbols in English? So if we're going to translate P and Q to English, it's... Malaya is excellent and virtuous. Mm. In number 2, we read it as not P and Q, but if we're going to translate it in English, Malaya is not excellent, yet she is virtuous. Number 3, P and not Q. In English, Malaya is excellent, but not virtuous. In number 4, it's not P and not Q. So in English, Malaya is not excellent and not virtuous. This junction in symbol is like P, V, Q, but we read it as P or Q, or P unless Q. For example, let P be the proposition 2 is prime, and Q be the proposition 2 is even. Now, in number 1, we read it as P or Q. But if we're going to translate it in English using this given, then 2 is a prime or even. In number 2, this is not P or Q. In English, 2 is not a prime or 2 is even. Number 3 is almost the same as number 2. So how about we jump in number 4? This is a not P or not Q. If we're going to translate it in English, it could be 2 is not a prime nor even. Exclusive or in symbol can be written like this. And we can translate it as P or Q, P X or Q, or P exclusive or Q. But wait, or is also used for disjunction, right? So, how do we know when to use disjunction or exclusive OR whenever we see this word in a sentence? 
Simple lang. Let's have this example. Troy is a singer. Or, Troy is a teacher. So, when to use or an exclusive or? This one is for disjunction. Why? Because Troy can be a singer and a teacher at the same time. We can have two professions at the same time, right? So it's this junction. Now how about this one? Troy is drinking water or Troy is singing. This compound proposition is for exclusive or. Why? Because we cannot drink water and sing at the same time, right? So it's just either Troy is drinking water or is singing. Now how about we try another example for exclusive or. Let P be the proposition Ram is in Italy at the moment. And Q be the proposition Ram is in Japan at the moment. So P, X or Q means Ram is in Italy or Japan at the moment. We chose exclusive or instead of disjunction because Ram cannot be in Italy and Japan at the same time, right? The next operator is conditional. So this symbol means if P, then Q. P implies Q. If P, Q. P only if Q. Or it can be P is sufficient for Q. But sometimes, these conditional statements have a reversed order of P and Q. So remember that if you happen to see Q if P, you translate this in symbols using P implies Q. Note that I just reversed the order of the two propositions because it's if. Same as with whenever is necessary for, as follow from, or provided, and so on. Let's try these examples. Let P be the proposition I buy a smartphone. Q, I get a free SIM card. How are we going to translate if I buy a smartphone, then I get a free SIM card? Okay, so since this is if and then statement, I'm going to write it as P implies Q. If you have a conditional statement or an implication like this one, P is known as the hypothesis. While Q... Okay, too slow, right? <laughs> and Q is known as the conclusion. Okay? In letter B, if I buy a smartphone, then I don't get a free SIM card. Again, this is an if and then statement. So I'm going to use implication or conditional. Now, I buy a smartphone is P, but notice that this is a negation of Q. Because Q is I get a free SIM card, while this one is I don't get a free SIM card. So, meaning we need to negate this proposition P. So, therefore, this is P implies not Q in symbols. Okay, how about you try this one? Yes, the answer is not P implies Q. How about this? Yes, it's not P implies not Q. Now, a biconditional statement in symbol can be read as P if and only if Q, P is equivalent to Q, and P is a necessary and sufficient condition for Q. This is like the equal symbol in an equation. For example, let P be the proposition Paul is a singer. 
and Q be the proposition. Paul knows how to sing. So, this symbol means Paul is a singer if and only if he knows how to sing. In arithmetic operations, we have PEMDAS, right? Wherein multiplication precedes division, addition, and subtraction. So, in logical operators, we also have laws of precedence. The operator negation comes first before conjunction, disjunction, conditional, and biconditional. For example, let P be the proposition Aling Bebang only goes out with girls. Q be the proposition Aling Bebang goes with Pepai. R is the proposition Pepai is a girl. So, how do we translate P and Q implies R in English sentence? Since conjunction precedes conditional or implication, we need to trans translate this part first. So, Aling Bebang only goes out with girls and goes with Pepai. After the conjunction, conditional statement will follow. So, this statement means if Aling Bebang only goes out with girls and goes with Pepai, then Pepai is a girl. So, notice that the compound proposition P and Q here is already given and became the hypothesis for the main operation which is conditional or implication. So, kinamit yung if and then for P and Q and the proposition R. Now, how about you try this example? You can pause the video if you like. Okay, the first thing that you need to do here is to recognize the three propositions P, Q, and R. And since you can see here that you have a smartphone or a laptop, which is an example of a disjunction, it precedes the only if operator. So we need to transfer so you have a smartphone or a laptop first. You have a smartphone is the proposition Q. You have a laptop is the proposition R. Now since this is a disjunction, because you can have a smartphone and a laptop at the same time, you can use OR. Now, how about only if? Only if is conditional or implication operator. You can access the internet from the office is the proposition P. So, the hypothesis part of the conditional is here, while the Q or R becomes the conclusion. So... For a clearer logical expression, I will include open and close parentheses to state that Q and R precedes implication or conditional. So we have now the logical op expression P implies Q or R. Now how about this given? Notice that we have if here. So if we have P, if, R, we need to reverse these two propositions. So in symbols, this is R implies P. So we're going to do this in this example. You cannot drive a car is the negation of the proposition a. So, this is not A. You don't have a driver's license is the negation of B. So, this is not B. Now, since we have N here which represents conjunction, then you are below 18 years old is the proposition C. So, getting this 
expression, we have not A. Getting this expression will give us not B and C. But don't forget the if translation. And this means conditional in reverse. So, not B and C will be written here while not A will be written on the other side. So, the final answer is not B and C implies not A. And that's all for this video. If you want more video discussions in logic and math in the modern world, please, please, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for listening.